Welcome to the second gameplay guide for how to lose friends in 60 cards or less. This week, we're talking about the Werewolf deck. The deck list has been covered in detail in a different video, but for now, I'm going to throw it up and say the base rationale is play packs on Pup, use instants to fuck up the other person's board, print a bunch of wolf tokens, collect $200. First things first, we need to talk mulligans. Now luckily for us, this deck only requires two brain cells. That first brain cell is thinking about, can I play everything in this hand? And this second brain cell is thinking about, how quickly can I play it? This first hand, we have the mana to play everything, but we can't play our first thing until turn three. And that is a perilous situation for a deck that wants to be doing a touchdown dance around turn four to six. So we're dumping this. Now, with the next hand, we can't play every single card, but we can play almost all of them. We have the Kessig Naturalist, who's going to give us Violence Ramp, and we can play our first creature, turn one. You keep these hands. If you dump a hand like this, fiending for a pack song pup, I will come to your home and I will revoke your Team Jacob membership card myself. Keep these hands. Once we get into the game, the first rule you need to understand is whatever werewolf you send out first, you are sending them out to die. No exceptions, people. There is yet to be a person born on this planet with the patience necessary to hold removal for one of your important werewolves. Everybody will lose their goddamn mind the second they see anything with a daybound, nightbound keyword, and they will blow their load immediately. Therefore, you play the wolves you care about least first. Now I said it once on TikTok, I will say it again here, people get caught sleeping by Snarling Wolf all the time. Whether this gentleman is incapable of reading active abilities or he thought losing his only flyer over three damage was a good trade, it works and it's funny every time it works. Anyway, there's that blown load I was talking about. Now we can play all of our good shit. If you are feeling particularly spicy, I would play Tovalar as soon as you have the mana to because he gives us card draw and we have no other goddamn way to draw cards in this deck. Now he's gonna die too because nobody outside of silver is fool enough to just let you draw cards for free, but if you can get at least two to three cards out of him, it's always gonna be a worthwhile trade. Now the way the middle, most of the games you play are gonna go is you're gonna play a bunch of wolves, you're gonna use some instants to kill some shit, you're gonna do stompy bullshit, but there will come a very pivotal and very important moment, which is the time when you have to decide, do I keep playing my shit or do I let it go to nighttime? Now, every werewolf we are running is strictly better at night, so we always want it to go to nighttime, but because taking it to nighttime makes us spend a turn doing nothing, if you swap it to nighttime too early in the game, your opponent is still gonna have plenty of shit to play and they can just swap it back to daytime immediately, which would force us to spend multiple turns doing nothing to make nighttime stick, and at that point, you are probably fucking losing. So the most important thing to do is just watch your opponent's hand. If they are like top deck or Von Dickhead out here and they run out of cards, let it go to nighttime immediately. You are about to demolish them. And thanks to all of the instant speed damage modifiers and direct damage we have in this deck, there are a lot of creative ways you can close games out, but the most reliable one is just dropping Arlen during the nighttime. Being able to put a 5-5 with haste trample and indestructible on the field is basically a fucking Mortal Kombat finisher to most decks when you already have the advantage. Now that you get what we are trying to do here, let's move on to lesson two, which is do not block with your important shit. And your important shit is anything that is a werewolf and pack song pup. That is why we got one cost wolves and that's why we got wolf tokens. Every once in a while, somebody is gonna play a big creature against you early and you're gonna get scared. You're gonna be like, oh, I should block that so I don't take damage. Fuck that damage, take it. We win damage trades. You know why? Because we have packs on pup and Pax on Pup does not get tired. Pax on Pup does not take days off. The only things Pax on Pup does is get counters and fuck bitches. Now in this particular game, we did get gifted by playing Howling Moon into a Spellslinger deck, but in general, the rule holds of do not trade away your werewolves, and if you get Pax on Pup out, you really just need to hold out a couple turns, and then he will carry the game for you. Now unfortunately, I must tell you with a heavy heart that because our deck thrives on stupid bullshit like packs on pup stacking, it means we are also very vulnerable to stupid bullshit. And for us, stupid bullshit is defined as anything that stalemates us. We are always looking 
to have a significant advantage by around turn four, and so if there is any deck that can hold even with us, or God forbid, have a meaningful advantage on us after turn four, we are probably screwed. Case in point, this person has now brought out a Shieldred, and do you know what we do against Shieldred? We don't do a goddamn thing. None of our removal can handle it solo, and we don't have a single thing out on the board that can swing into her, which we wouldn't want to do anyway, because she has Death Touch. Now, most stalemates we lose anyway, but we especially lose stalemates against black decks because these motherfuckers chip at your life like they are the IRS. It is relentless. Now, this game is also a great example of just straight up piloting error because I may have been able to save this if I had let it go to nighttime, but I was so panicked about not being able to block that I just kept playing stuff out of my hand. And folks, if you are behind in a game, you are almost never going to catch up during the daytime. So just don't panic and it'll be all right. But if you do panic like me, this is what'll happen to you. The other type of stalemate that will very quickly turn against you is one where the opponent is just running a lot of defensive interaction spells, right? Our deck is somewhat invested into building our own board, but a huge part of our win condition is disrupting our opponent's board through offensive instants, and so at least a few of those have to work. Any deck that is based on just scaling and defending their own board is always going to beat you if they can just survive. So if they can stiff arm our interaction, like here, or here, or here, the game is gonna get away from you. Now, good people, I do need to come clean about something. I love this deck, it's very funny. It is always a good time when you win with this deck, but it does stop winning around mid-plat, and that is because people just get less stupider. Around plat three, plat two, people are no longer suiciding into Snarling Wolf's active ability, they're no longer waiting for you to get an 8-8 pack song pup, and they are paying attention to when you have mana open to cast instants. All in all, it is deplorable, disgusting behavior, but that does not need to stop us, because because as any true magic vet knows, you can always get a little bit more toxic. So for the person that does want to grind ranked, I have made an updated deck list that has a couple important changes. Now the overarching theme of this deck is that we are dropping a lot of our shenanigans for more consistently valuable options. So first up, we have dropped Paxong Pup and the low cost wolves meant to help enable him and we have instead picked up Tenacious Pup because it's one cost and it lets us spread some advantages around to our other werewolves. Being being able to swing with a 3-3 werewolf with trample and vigilance on turn 3 is just straight up better than a pup that might get to 10-10 if your opponent gets incredibly unlucky and doesn't draw any of the removal that they brought. Now this theme is going to continue with creatures like Halana and Elena who are going to consistently give counters to all of our creatures and give haste. We've got the Reckless Storm Seeker that is also giving haste and isn't giving counters but is giving a damage bonus. We got Volatile Arsonist because he is giving us consistent spread damage whenever he attacks and he does have haste. And then we've got one copy of the Howl Pack Piper to give us a more consistent creature advantage. Now we've also dropped out almost all of our instant speed aggression. We're instead taking sorceries like Unnatural Moonrise and Mephite's Enthusiasm, and that's because the perpetual damage bonus is frankly too good to pass up, and controlling nighttime is also too good to pass up now that we're going to be playing against people that are good enough to not let it go to nighttime for no reason. I did keep our copies of a braid because playing against an artifact deck with no instant speed removal is the number one cause of heart attacks in America. America today. Now we did add two new instants, which is Tamiyo's safekeeping because it's going to give something hexproof and indestructible. This will save maybe one out of every five games when you haven't gotten a lot of werewolves and they try to remove the one important one you have. We also have you line up the shot. For the most part, this is a break glass in case of a blue-white deck since it can kill flyers or it can be used as enchantment artifact removal. Now I've also dropped out almost all of the dual lands that enter the battlefield tapped and the reason behind this is obvious, we are an aggro deck, playing faster is better. I had all those dual lands in the first version of the deck because I hate having to mulligan, I would rather chew my own arm off, but if we want to play with the big boys, we need to be able to play faster. Now the mindset you want to have playing this deck is basically the same as version 1, but we can see in this ditto matchup just how much better it is. First off, our opponent plays Snarling Wolf, which again is a bad wolf you're trying to catch stupid people with. He can't activate his ability when he chump blocks with it because he played an enter the battlefield tapped land. 
Then he tries to do instant speed removal, which fails because now we're bringing protection. And then after using that, he does not have a consistent way to get rid of my planeswalker, which is forcing him to overextend with his creatures, allowing us to stomp his ass out easily. Now unfortunately, not all of your games will be that easy. One of the most common options in the meta right now is blue, black, white, good shit, and that deck still does very well against us, mainly because that deck is always going to be packing removal, it is always going to be packing some BS flying creature, it's always going to be packing extra removal, and it's always going to be packing 20 copies of Shieldred. They always draw Shieldred, dude, I'm over it. But on the whole, there is still a ridiculous amount of success to be had with this deck, particularly against anybody who is silly enough to keep a slow hand. If somebody gives you a turn two or turn three nighttime, the game is basically wrapped up then and there with how quickly this deck gets out of control. In this game, we do use a hex proof to finish it out, but even if we didn't use that, we still would have stomped the shit out of them. Now, obviously, Diamond 4 is pretty far from the pinnacle of ranked Magic the Gathering Arena play, but I did want to give you guys sort of a side-by-side -side of how powerful these two versions of the decks are. With version 1, I think I played it for about a week, and I was stuck at around plat 3, plat 2. After I had settled on version 2, it took me about two days to get to Diamond, and I'm mid at this game, right? So both are very fun, both have pissed off my friends to no end in the casual games we've played, Version 1 will get you to Plat for free, and Version 2 will get you to Diamond for free. So I hope you like them. Leave any changes you would recommend in the comments, and stay toxic.